everybody, my name is Red. Welcome to the 1000 subscriber special and my solo duo trio bass design, the Moscow. First we'll start with the cost of the bass and its efficiency. It will cost 5,000 wood, 11,000 stone, 13k metal, and 50 high qual for a fully upgraded Moscow. This strong solo duo trio bass with including a bunker is pretty doable for the upkeep cost of 3,000 metal, 2k stone, and around 9 high qual per day. The protection of this base is 34 rockets to TC and 26 to main loot. We will now start with the tour of the base. Going outside of the walls, you'll enter through your gate, which will be airlocked by the base itself. You cannot jump through this airlock due to the fact that the base blocks it. We have a small oil refinery in this compound and two large furnaces more than enough to upkeep a solo. On top of the airlock we have an auto turret. Once we head into the airlock we have a high qual roof that protects TC. Going up we have a couple lockers for optimum storage space for your kits, a research table with a box right underneath for depoting items after you get back to base. Above the chute we can house our repair bench in two boxes in order to keep more depot loot. Right underneath the jump up to the shooting floor we have a mini loot room. Heading up, we have a large box and our tier 2 right next to it. We also have a small room dedicated to small furnaces next to the mini copter hangar. And then, we have a depot chest, a small box, and a small furnace, all for when you come back to base after a mini copter run. It also comes with a landing pad for the mini and an auto turret in order to protect it. We can now head all the way up, where we have our main shooting floor and our electricity set up with a windmill. Heading all the way back downstairs, we'll go to our TC, main loot, bunker, and shoot. Once inside of the bunker, we have our tier 3, an unlootable locker for your most important kits, extra storage space, your main loot room, an unlootable TC, and of course, many barbecues with small boxes underneath to make the total storage main loot 8.4 large boxes. Do keep in mind for the building of this base that you will end up needing some very important blueprints such as garage door and reinforced glass windows in order to work for the airlock. Other than that, let's get right into the build. To start the build, we'll start off with two low place triangle foundations, then two high place triangle foundations and two high place regular foundations. Behind the regular foundations, put two triangle foundations. Surround it with walls and make a one by one. Upgraded all the stone whenever ready. Put a triangle and a roof over, and then drop your TC in that triangle space. Put a window on it in order to protect your TC. You can now place some basic starter items like boxes, furnaces, and bags in here. Then put a door on it and seal it. The current footprint of the base should look exactly like this. Once you've gathered enough materials, start upgrading all your foundations to stone. We will now start on the starter base. Start by placing walls all the way around, then a doorway. Place another wall next to that doorway. Upgrade all the walls but not the doorway. Leave that one as wood for now. Continue upgrading your walls, then place roofs right overhead. Start upgrading the roofs, but the middle one, leave that as wood, so that way we can chop it out later for when we have to make our shoe. Place a door on the front, and we have our starter. After finishing the starter, we can place down our furnaces in this back triangle corner. Now we can start on main loot. First start by removing the wooden door, then removing all the starter items inside of main loot. Put a half wall here, a triangle floor, then a regular floor inside of main loot. Demolish the half wall and the triangle. Upgrade that to stone. We can now place our workbench level 1 in the back corner. We can officially make the starter fully operational by placing a half wall and a normal wall and demolishing the half wall underneath in order to make our bunker. To make it easier to place boxes, start by putting a triangle on the half height square floor that we put a couple minutes ago. We can start by placing a large box as close to the wall and as far back as possible. 
a barbecue facing inwards towards that box and another box right next to it. Put a small box right underneath the barbecue as well. Now go underneath and do the exact same thing here. Now demolish the twig triangle and place a garage door. Now that the garage door is placed, we can place back that triangle in order to make it easier to place barbecues. Place the barbecues facing outwards towards the walls in order to get more space from them. Right underneath, we'll put small boxes for more storage. Be sure that you can glide safely in and out of those boxes without getting stuck. Heading down to the bottom, we'll place one barbecue here. Don't place another one on the other side because you need to get to TC. And that will complete our main loot room. You can now place another door frame here and a garage door in order to seal up your main loot. Once you've gathered enough materials, we can start moving out of our starter and we can start moving into a main base. Hatch it out the wooden door frame and replace it with a wall. Then hatch it out your triangle. Place two walls in succession to make it into a chute. You'll then need a ladder. Place it as close to the hard side wall as possible. We can now start placing walls on the chute, except for the last one. Make that a half wall. Then, place triangles all the way across it. Start by upgrading the walls and upgrading all of the stone triangles. Remove the half wall and replace it with a normal wall. We can now start placing walls all the way around except for the triangular floor that is furthest from the chute. Make that one a doorway and then seal off the rest. Place a doorway on this semi-square that you just made here. Then upgrade the rest to stone. Then place triangles right above the chute. And then upgrade those to stone as well. Since we already have a doorway there, we'll use the same trick as we did in the main loop. You can now place all of your roof tiles on top except for the semi-square. Get on top of the semi-square and place a regular floor to make it easier to place walls. Make another semi-square with a door frame in order to place a sheet metal door. Upgrade all of it to stone. We'll now begin on the airlock. Start by placing a sheet metal door right on the entrance. Hop down and place a regular foundation, and then a triangle foundation. Upgrade those both to stone. We'll now place a roof on the square foundation. Upgrade that to stone. Then we'll put walls right underneath the roof. Upgrade both to stone. Then for the airlock, place a doorway and a window frame. On top of that, a triangle, then a roof. Place two walls on either side to seal it up. Then place door frames all around the second floor. Then place a garage door on the semi-square. Above the chute, place a sideways repair bench. Then place two large boxes on either side of the repair bench. We'll now start work on the mini loot room underneath the tier two and the jump up. Start by placing a large box as close to the wall as possible, then a barbecue facing right towards it. Another box right next to the barbecue, then place a barbecue facing the wall, and another one right next to it. Then underneath the far back barbecue, place a small box. We can start by placing our tier 2 to the furthest right corner as possible, then place a small box underneath. Now this part is very important. Head out to the left of the base, and the wall that is closest to the airlock on the left will be the one that you need to upgrade to high wall. If you don't do this, you won't be able to upgrade it again because it's behind TC. 
By now you should have enough materials to upgrade most of the floor to sheet metal. Now you can head back up and start upgrading all the floors on main loot to sheet metal. Now that the most important parts are done, we can find a permanent spot for our research bench in the corner and a large box right underneath it. So far the base should look exactly like this. We can now start by putting some honeycomb on the base. Put triangle foundations all the way around except for two foundations that connect to the chute. These both need to be square so that way we can put roofs on them very soon. So far this should be the layout of all your honeycomb foundations. Next we'll put walls on all the triangle foundations. On the square foundation place a roof facing inwards towards the base. Do the same thing on the other side of the chute as well. Next place triangle floors on top of all the honeycomb. Then, place two more walls. Then, do the same thing for all of the other pieces of honeycomb that are triangles. Now we can start on the shooting floor. Place a window that's closest to the jump up, then a window on the outer honeycomb, a wall, a half wall, then a triangle on top of that. Demolish the half wall, and now we have our jump up to our actual shooting floor. Upgrade all of this part to stone. We can now put our doorway there, and two roofs on top of it. Now, start placing door frames. Put one on this entrance, one on where we're gonna put the mini copter hanger, and then we're gonna put windows all the way around. Put a door frame on those windows. The base currently should look something like this. And now we'll finish up our roof. Place a triangle here so it's easier to place these walls, and then upgrade all those walls to stone. Place a door frame here and put a sheet metal door on it. We can now place all of our embrasures on the base as well. Then place a garage door on the mini copter hanger and all the surrounding sheet metal doors as well. Now heading up to the top, we'll finish off the rest of the roof. Put roofs facing outwards from the base. I'll do this in no clip for simplicity. Now we can start on our electricity setup. Start by placing door frames in a star pattern across the base on top of the roof. Yeah. Once you get all the way up, place floor tiles all the way across on top of these door frames. Once you have enough for your tier 3, start removing everything from the secondary side of the main loot. Once you have this triangle cleared out, put a locker, lock it, and then put a window frame on it. Now place your tier 3 as far to the back left corner as you can. Rotate it and put two boxes under it. Now you can put main loot in any configuration you want. This is just the configuration I'm currently using. You can now start upgrading the rest of the base pretty much to all sheet metal.
can now place our lockers with us up here as well. Now for the electricity setup. Start by putting one auto turret on the mini copter pad. Now go up to the roof next to the jump up, jump down to the airlock. On top of the airlock, place another auto turret facing outwards. Now, go to your main loot, place a splitter next to the locker and under the bunker. Place three switches in succession. The first two I'd recommend using for your auto turrets, then the third one you can save for lights. Now place a windmill right on top of the base. Connect the power out down to your splitter. After turning on all the switches for your turrets, you can start placing your lights. And once you've gathered up enough materials, we can start upgrading the first and second floor to sheet metal. Your base should now officially look something like this. Once you're done upgrading, you can place all the necessary items inside of the minicopter hangar. We'll now start the finishing work on the base by getting our compound up. Depending on the style of compound you want to go for, whether or not you want external TCs or a very small compound, it's really all up to you. Personally with the Moscow, I like going for a really small compound, so this is what I'm going to be doing just for the sake of this video. But if you do decide to go with my compound design, go to the back of the base where the chute is and place your high external stone gate close enough to where it can make an airlock. Once this is done, you can start placing all of your high external stone walls. And this is the end of the base design, guys. I hope you did enjoy. I really appreciate all the love and support recently. A thousand subscribers. It's the first big milestone for the channel and I can't wait to see more. I hope this base design went well for you though. If you have any recommendations or if you did it any way different, go to my discord so that way you can post them in general chat. I'd love to see what you do with this base design. Anyway guys, I thank you again for watching and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.